In this video, we're going to have a look at the interface of LFO tool and also go through the graph section here and how to create our own custom LFO shapes. Now, I've got a project in Logic. I've got LFO2 actually running on some of the individual tracks and I've also placed it on the master so we can easily hear what it's doing. At the moment, it's not doing anything because we don't have anything rooted. Okay, so let's start off looking at the interface. We'll go left to right. So in the top left-hand corner, we have the filter section. It can be switched on here. So we can choose different filter types from here. And that means that LFO tool can actually work as a static filter as well. Really nice sounding filter. It's got a lot of the filter types that you might recognize from Serum as well. Okay, we have a MIDI section down here. Now, later on in this video series, we're going to have a look at using LFO tool as a MIDI controlled effect. And when we do that, we'll go through these parameters. The graph section is in the center here. Now, this allows us to create our own custom LFO shapes, also choose from presets. We have, within each instance of LFO tool, multiple LFO shapes we can use. And we can actually decide to route different LFO shapes to different parameters. Now, whenever you want to reinitialize LFO tool, you come to the presets and then initialize here. Now, down towards the bottom here, we have a few parameters that relate to our LFO shape, like the rate and swing, etc. Now, we have a preset section, as I said before, lots of different presets for LFO tool that people have programmed. Here we have the routing section. Now this allows us to use our custom LFO shape or one of the preset LFO shapes to affect cutoff, resonance, volume, pan, or one of the other filter parameters. We're gonna go through that later. We also have a global depth control for the LFO. Now finally, we have this little split section here. Now this allows us to assign our LFO shape to only affect parameters within a certain frequency range. For example, if we had a bass and a kick drum, we wanted to sidechain bass and a kick, then what we could do is decide to only sidechain the lower frequencies of the bass. In that case, whatever is highlighted blue here, in this case, it's lower frequencies, that is where our LFO shape is going to be working. So if we had it on the volume, for example, it would only affect the volume of the lower frequencies. Obviously, if this was switched on, if we click on it, the opposite is true. So now it's only going to affect the higher frequencies. That crossover point is set using this slider here. Now, something that's very useful in LFO tool is you can actually resize the window. I wish all plugins did that. So finally, on the interface, you may notice that as I kind of rest my mouse over different parameters, this little help kind of option appears down here, which can tell you what the parameter does, which is very, very useful. OK, so let's have a look at our graph area here and how to create your own custom LFO shapes. So at the moment, we've just got the initialized LFO shape, which looks like this. To create a point, you double click. You can then drag and move that point around. To delete that point, simply double click again on it. So if you make a point and then hold down Alt, you can actually snap that point to the grid up or down. Now the grid is set using this snap option here. So if we put that to sixteenths, it would be snapping to sixteenths. So you can really create intricate shapes that way. Now. Each point which isn't a horizontal or vertical line has curves that can be applied to it. And the curves are introduced by dragging on these hollow points that will appear up or down that gives you kind of concave or convex curves. Okay, so finally on this, if we hold down shift, we can create horizontal lines that can be dragged up and down. Now again, these relate to the snap option. So great for kind of trance gate effects. Okay, so that's how we create our own shapes. Now, for each instance of LFO tool, we have 12 different LFO shapes that we can create. Now, why would you need 12 different LFO shapes? Well, if you see here, we actually have these number options here. Now, these are choosing to route different LFO shapes to different parameters. So it means you don't have to have multiple LFO tools on the same track in order to affect the cutoff and the volume, for example. Now, from this menu here, we have different presets we can choose. So let's leave that one as it is. For the second one, let's go and choose a saw down. And for the third one, we'll choose 
side chain six. Now we could decide to have the first one affect the cutoff, the second one affect the resonance, and the third one affect the volume. Okay, let's actually be a bit more extreme with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to create a kind of stuttered effect like so, so we can really hear it. So now we've got different LFO shapes affecting these different parameters. Now we have a global rate for our LFO tool, but what we can also do is choose to say double the speed of one of the shapes, or we could halve it. So that way you can choose to change the speed of one of the graphs without having to change the overall rate. Now, once we have a shape we like, we can actually copy and paste it into a different slot. And what we can also do is come here and save it. So I've made one here called test one, let's call this one test two. And now we can always access this from the menu. Okay, so there's the interface of LFO tool and how we go about creating our own custom LFO shapes. So first of all, I'm just gonna root the LFO shape one to the filter cutoff so we can hear something. So we have a series of buttons down here, first of all. This one here, the little musical note on it, allows you to use the host tempo to sync at a photo. And when it's off, it's free. Now you may be used to seeing that on a synthesizer. When you apply the LFO to a parameter, you can choose to have it sync to the host tempo or not. Next up, we can decide whether to include triplet times in the LFO rate section. So if I just apply this as a quarter note, I can actually change that so it's a triplet. But if that's off, then we don't have those triplets as an option. Similarly, I can choose to have dotted notes on or off. So at the moment they're off, and now they're on. This is a way of adding some kind of a little bit more interesting rhythm to LFO tool rather than just having straight quarter notes or eighth notes or whatever. Okay, so we have this anchor button here. Now this determines whether LFO tool is going to be fixed by the song position. So that means that as you're playing the track, it'll always jump to the correct position in the song. So you'll see that as I'm kind of stopping this and switching this on and off, when it's on, it always starts from the beginning of the cycle. But when it's off, it'll start from wherever it is in the cycle. Let's put this to a straight quarter note. So with it on, you're always going to get the same sound each and every time coming out of LFO tool. But when it's off, you'll get a different sound. Actually, sometimes you can get quite an interesting sound by having it off because it will start triggering from a different point. So the rate control we've already touched on, um, which is quite a simple one really, it's just a speed that the LFO tool is working at. So the swing control, as the name would suggest, allows LFO tool to swing. And this allows you to add some groove into LFO tool. Really cool effect. Now I should say to actually set any parameter back to its default value, if you hold down command and click, it'll take it back. Another thing I should say that the swing control only works if you've got these two buttons on. Okay, the phase control determines at what point we're gonna be triggered from 
in the LFO cycle. So by moving that, you do get kind of wildly different results and, and different kind of vibes coming from this effect. And of course, we could try that in conjunction with the swing as well. Really, really cool effect. Let me just reinitialize this. Now, the pulse width modulation control, as you can see, kind of bends the LFO shape. Put this back to a quarter note. So you can really come up with some funky kind of patterns messing around with these different parameters. Okay, so last up we have this smooth control here. So let's just go in and make another shape like this. We'll do. You can hear those clicks we're getting as the LFO shape is jumping between these different points. Smooth control allows us to smoothen this out and remove any clicks. Now we've got this on a very extreme setting, but you can see that having it quite high, we start to lose any nasty clicks. A lot of the time you don't need to have it nearly as high as that if you're just using kind of a side chain style LFO. Okay, so those are our LFO controls down here.